Patrick's Garage. Hello you guys! Today let's have a look at the cool start device – carburetor Zenith Stromberg. This is simple one-barrel carburetor. Cool start device dribbling. What's wrong? What can I do? Let's look how this device work. To starting cold engine, carburetor Zenith Stromberg is provided with a cold start device. In this picture you can clearly see how this device works. Valve disc is provided with four calibrated holes. On the same shaft with this valve disc is a chalk cam. And this chalk cam is connected to a pull wire of throttle control. When the cool start device is engaged, the valve disc turns and this links up the channel 1 from the floor chamber via one or several of calibrated holes to the channel 2. This channel 2 terminates with venturi between the vacuum plunger and the chalk flap. So engine receives extra fuel to facilitate cooled starting. Always check the floor chamber valve first, just to make sure you don't want spend days to chasing your tail to find out all you had. This carburetor that I put on my engine to see how it will work. That sound gives me the heebie-jeebies. Car shook like mud. It probably dribbling from fuel chamber. Carburetor is just asking for trouble now. It is very dangerous, as I said earlier. Of course, it's a major problem. I bought this carburetor and I love to find out about the condition of this carburetor. Can you guess what this means? Of course, as I said, first of all, we need to replace the floor chamber valve. Such a big leak cannot be only because of the starting device wrong. Fuel went over the edge of floor chamber. We need dismantling carburetor for repair. Sadly, but truly, all this stuff going to break down as the edge. We're trying to find out why fuel leaks. To unscrew the air filter, it is better to use a socket wrench. Half an inch bolts. Carburetor attached with 4 inch nuts. Nuts also half inch size. There is a brass plate on which the carburetor number is stamped. This carburetor worked with another carburetor. Throttle cable clip can be used from other Volvo models. And disconnect cable and tubes. And lift out carburetor. Starting devices are different. Scoring on the mating faces can be removed with sandpaper and grinding paste. Before we start restore mating faces, all holes must be closed. Penetration of dirt and debris if inside is unacceptable. To sand the surface, I took a piece of glass and wrapped it with sandpaper. To prevent abrasive getting on the carburetor, I covered it with film. The main thing is not to spoil. The surface should be absolutely flat without distortions. All holes are closed with small rubber plugs. I made these plugs of pencil rubber eraser. Look, what a beautiful smooth surface. At all costs avoid getting abrasive inside the carburetor. 
The right solution is to clean the carburetor with a vacuum cleaner. I find out the cheapest toothpaste and I want to use it to grind their surfaces. Even at this time of grinding, we must assemble everything correctly. And I'm starting to grind, so I can fool around for a very long time. If you want, it is a kind of anti-stress. Not an even little bit of toothpaste should get inside. I bought a lot of carburetors, but they are all old and do not work well. Don't forget to pull the rubber plugs out of those little holes. After work, we have to wash off all remnants of the toothpaste. Some repair kits have a cardboard spacer, like this. It seems to me that it is not necessary to use an additional rubber ring because it makes difficult for the mechanism work. Gasket, this is very good, but not forget that the most important thing is the smooth surfaces that are in contact. I do not recommend using a rubber ring. Cardboard gasket is available in a many carburetor kits. Someone of course uses this rubber ring, but I'll not do that. I just used it and didn't like it. With gasoline does not turn well. That stupid idea, let's not implement that one now. All parts must be absolutely clean. I also blew the floor chamber with clean air. To tell the truth, I don't really like that the shaft is warm. See how the shaft play in the bushing. Obviously, the shaft is warm. Certainly, we're not going to buy a new cold start device. And therefore, we need to grind the surface of the shaft and make a bushing of a smaller diameter for it. We better do this than get pain in the rear with the search for new spare parts. I think that we can use the help of a turner. I think this gasket wouldn't hurt. And eventually was decided to make a new shaft for cool start device. This is oversized shaft. Also the bushing was enlarged from inside. The shaft is fitted to the size of the bushing, probably slightly tapered. Top a half ring for this shaft. Retaining half ring made of stainless steel. Never forget about this spring. Calibrated disc. Look at the picture so as not to confuse. Otherwise, this device is not working correctly. Now we need to install the return spring. It is a very hard return spring and not easy to install it. First I install the return spring and then leverage of shaft. Then washers and nut. All nuts with inch thread. And now time to install our cool start device to the carburetor body. And then we secure it with two screws with two fixation, fixation washers. And tighten with simple screwdriver. And we see that shaft turns very well.
if you want you can use this gasket but it uh, not available in all sets and if you decided to disassemble the carburetor probably you will need a gasket sets for your carburetor it's not going to leak I'm sure this carburetor will last a long time. Bye-bye!